We're here in the Roman settlement of Springhead in Kent, which is perhaps not as well preserved as that of, say, Chester or York. But let's take a look in the field, just over here, right up against the A2. The Roman town of Springhead was built around a major complex of shrines. Underneath temple number four was buried, at each corner of the room, a six-month-old baby. Two of them had been beheaded. It's hard to tell from a skeleton whether a child has been sacrificed or has merely died. Pliny writes that infants were often buried under the eaves of buildings. Only when Christianity came to Britain were they buried with everyone else in the cemeteries outside the towns. Under temple number three was an older building and buried under that kitchen floor were 14 babies. One archaeologist suggested they had died in an epidemic which came from the east in AD 166. But infanticide was not illegal under Roman law. Don't be misled though by decapitation. This is not just a Roman temple, this is a Romano-Celtic temple. We now associate decapitation with punishment, but the Celts venerated the human head. It was the seat of identity, wisdom and action. Across England we find many rich old Celtic ladies buried with full honours and opulent grave goods, but with heads carefully cut off and placed between their ankles. We do not know which gods were worshipped here. There were Venus figurines and a miniature bronze arm a votive offering, and these suggest a healing cult. Why here? Well, this is the route of Watling Street, connecting the ports of Kent to London Bridge and to Britain beyond. This was a spiritual service station, around which the town of Springhead, Vagniakis, grew. Well, I like York and Bath, and I like what they've done with Chester, but for me, it's Springhead. And this is still the route to Europe. Watling Street began as a Celtic trackway. The Romans built their roads. We built our roads. The latest layer is the A2, connecting Dover to London. And now, parallel to that, cuts High Speed 1, connecting Londinium with Gaul. And once again we see the confluence with water. It's likely that the spring here was the original temple of the Celts long before the Romans came. And you can imagine the travellers casting their offerings into the Nymphaeum or the Grotto of the Nymphs.